Hey Hooper, it's Deanne Love here and in this tutorial I am going to share with you three variations of isolations. There are so many different isolations that you can do and these three that we're going to do today in this tutorial are all in the center front plane. So I am using a 95 centimeter polypro hoop. You can use whatever hoop you like, the smaller the hoop, the less space, the tighter it's going to feel with your arm structure and the bigger the hoop, the more you're going to have to reach out and also often bigger hoops are a lot heavier so you'll need to build up some arm strength. I remember when I first started doing isolation so many years ago, I was using a really big heavy hoop and it made my arm super duper strong but you might like to give yourself lots of breaks. I am going to show you what these three look like and then we're going to break them down and then we're going to flow them together because they actually fit together. They are three beautiful isolations. Awesome. Okay, let's look at the first one. Remembering that all of these isolations will require you to keep your hoop in the center at the front. So depending on the size of your hoop, you might want to take a video or a photo or watch yourself in a mirror or use your shadow. These are all really great techniques to help you with your front and center isolations. You want to kind of keep the hoop at the same height, in the same space. Now I know as we're learning and even once you know how to do isolations, it's very easy for the hoop to drop or move away from this perfect center position and the way to help that or to kind of refine your isolations make them a little bit neater make them actual isolations rather than kind of moving spinning all over the place awesomeness is to play with pace so sometimes you'll find that when you're faster you can keep it in the center or you're slower and then also to play with really breathing into your chest, holding your stance and articulating or moving your arms and hands and wrists and finger joints in a way that allows your hoop not to drop. So not to move off this center the whole time. So your hoop is isolating around in this center. It's okay if your hoop does kind of wobble or go around a little bit. Uh, you can also use your body's movement with grounded stance to kind of make sure that you're staying as close as you can to the center line. All right, a lot of the times I start and finish at six or 12. And for this first one, we're going to start at six o'clock with the hands on the inside. And this is actually a ghosting isolation. One hand is going to do most of the work and then your hands roll over and they come together at the top. So for me, I'm using my right hand most of the time, but I'm sliding my left hand at the exact same opposite position as my right. You might choose to use your left hand so that you can balance out. And what we're doing is on the right hand, we're leading with the pinky. I'm creating tension in my bicep and tricep to bring my hand up to about three and nine. Maybe you can go a little bit higher. What you wanna try not to do is push your hoop up. Just allow the hoop to stay in that same center line. Create tension until you get to this parallel position with your hands. And then you're going to gently push away and roll your thumbs up and then roll your pinkies up. This is a little bit awkward. And then you're going to continue to act like there's magnets in your pinkies and bring your pinkies together just here. So we went from inside pointer fingers together. One hand does the work, the other ghosts, but the ghosting hand you're just going to keep kind of uh, grasped or cupped gently around the inner perimeter of the hoop until you get to about three and nine and then you roll over a full roll so that your um, the inside of your fingertips are touching the hoop and then bring your pinky fingers together. So you can start to activate a smooth continuous roll, <laughs> which is sometimes hard when you're concentrating. Some things that might happen is when you get to this rollover, the hoop drops down. Now, if the hoop does drop down and you're kind of just in flow, you might want to go with that and move into something else. But if you are practicing and you are drilling, what you want to do is kind of lift up not too much, remember, staying in the center. Lift up the energy just a little so you don't get this kind of dropping motion in your arms. So point your fingers together at base, roll over at three and nine, and then bring 
your pinky fingers together. From here, we're going to do a half moon or a two-handed isolation. I'm going to drive with my right hand first. So I'm going to continue to keep the hoop kind of for me, it's like pelvis height and just above my head. I'm going to drive down with my pinky halfway, two, back down to six, change hands, point your fingers together and drive up to 12. Pinky fingers together, swap hands, down and swap, up and swap, down and swap, up and swap. I like to get a little bit of movement in my body kind of taking my chest from side to side, but that was not accessible to me in the beginning. I had to really understand how to do the mechanics and build strength and coordination in my upper body and muscles first. Okay, so we did the two hand inside ghosting isolation, the half moon or two hand isolation. And when we get around a few times, one time or two times, we're going to go into this alternating kind of scissor arm ghosting isolation, which looks like this. And I'll show you how to do that. So up to the top, one hand down, change, one hand up, change, one hand down. And my one hand down is my right arm. When I get to my arm being across my body, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the ghost in and now we're going opposite directions. So my ghosting hand is going to, right, my left hand is my ghosting hand and what I want to do is bring for the most beautiful effect, for the kind of the most symmetrical and clean sharp effect, you want to have your hands going in opposite directions on the inside of the hoop but meeting like they're their opposites at six and 12, and then pinkies have magnets in them at nine. And then at this point here, your hand is going to, my left hand is going to ghost over my right. And then as I go to release with my right hand, I'm just going to hold the hoop, give it some support with my left hand, which is the bottom one, roll my hand over, so all the way. So palm, back of hand, palm, and then my left hand continues, my right hand is doing the driving, six and 12, pinkies together. This bottom hand has to come up and over, six and 12, pinkies together. This top hand ghosts over, left hand ghosts over, holds the hoop for a moment as I reposition, six and 12, pinkies together, six and 12, pinkies together, six and 12, pinkies together. I hope I'm in the center. So you can see what's happening is I am starting to pivot. I like to really move and pivot on my, you don't have to do that at all, um, but that's just how I bring some kind of body movement into it. Sometimes I do a little body roll as I am moving through this ghosting isolation. So let's see if we can lock those three together so that you can kind of have this little isolation sequence, which will be really fun to do. So we start down at the base and just like loosen through the shoulders and the neck, take a deep breath if you need to, relax through the pelvis and relax through the belly and then give it some activation. And by activation, I just kind of mean like, imagine that you're just switching on the front of your body or you're creating some tension there. You're not like holding really tight so that you can't breathe, but you're just super aware. It's like you become embodied, you become connected and understanding that hooping is not just your hands touching the hoop, like it is a full body experience. So you're gonna bring the breath and bring the body into it. Uh, and we have point fingers together at the bottom and we go up. I'm using my right hand. I can feel tension on the outside of my right arm. As we come to three and nine, we press out a little, not so much that the hoop is like, you know, going to warp out of shape, but just enough so that you're not going to drop it or it's not going to slide. Roll over so that your pinkies are kind of up and coming to meet each other. So try it one more time, up to the top. What just happened there, so I'll show you a little bit of troubleshooting. What happened there was I got a little bit too tense with my outward push, which meant that when I got here, I was like rolling over. So if you can kind of be a little bit smoother with it, a little bit lighter, you're finding that, that sweet spot between, between being too light and letting the hoop drop and being too hard and letting it be kind of all really clunky right here. So it, you'll know the feeling, you'll be like, oh, it just seamlessly happens. So be light with your touch. When you get to the top, choose which way you're going to go. You're in this center symmetrical position, so you could go to the left or you could go to the right. 
um, or you could go with your left or you could go with, with your right. I'm going with my right down to base. Change hands, point your fingers together. Up, change hands, pinky fingers together. Down and up, down. The next time my right hand comes over to the left side, I'm going to bring my left hand in and six and 12 pinkies together. Shift position just to allow this hand to roll. Six and 12 pinkies together, six and 12 pinkies together. Okay, I'm gonna do it from the opposite uh, so that you can see from behind because I know that sometimes helps. So, pointer fingers down, roll, three and nine. Point uh, pinky fingers together, right, down, change, left, up, change, right, down, change, left, up, change, right, quarter, left comes in, six and 12, pinkies together, six and 12, pinkies together, six and 12, pinkies together. Now, one last little troubleshooting tip. If you do watch yourself, and I highly recommend it, either videoing yourself or uh, watching yourself in a mirror or watching yourself in a window or anywhere where you can see what's going on, um, if you're finding like it's kind of dropping out of place, then play a game with the pace and the tension, the positions of the hands. Um, if you're finding like when you're doing your ghosting isolation, like one hand's going really fast and they're not, just slow down, come back to those basics of six o'clock, 12 o'clock, three and nine. If you're hitting those points, if you're generally keeping the hoop in the center, then little by little, you're going to build more awareness, coordination and strength. Okay, they are super fun to play with. If your brain gets a little bit tense <laughs> or stressed out by these moves, then just remember that you will get there. You can have a little dance break, shake it off and come back and have another practice. You'll also feel after a while, if isolations are new to you, after a while, some strength in your posture and some building of strength in your arms. If you do these isolations or you're bringing them into your flow sessions, then please tag me or on Instagram, I am at DeanneLoveXO or leave a comment down below and let me know how you're going. I hope that you enjoy them. I love them. I love to bring them just into my natural flow and the more times you practice them, they'll just become more and more natural to you. Be courageous with your expression. Big hoop love from me to you. Mwah.